You will stop hating null pointer exceptions after you watch this video. Null pointers, also known as the billion dollar mistakes, are actually not so bad. Here's why and how to enjoy null pointer exceptions. Maybe not enjoy, but at least tolerate. And we'll also go through how to deal with them. So let's roll. Null pointer exceptions are one of the most common errors and for a good reason. But before we can go into that, let's just have a little bit of philosophy, but I promise you it will only be 30 seconds. So Thomas Sowell famously said that there are no solutions, only alternatives. This do not only apply to economics, which Thomas Sowell is a world class in, but to life and even software itself. Maybe some people will sell software is life. Of course, we would love to not have any more null pointer exceptions, but what is the alternative? Null pointers simply represent that something was not found or something wasn't possible. There are alternatives to represent null or nothing was found, but these are not part of the mainstream languages. And for a good reasons, they complicate things very, very much. And you might say Rust have something, but yes, Rust is not a mainstream language and very hard and complicated to learn. In the same vein, we hate global variables, but we use global variables all the time because it would be a pain to send every global variable to every place in our code. In other words, null pointers and global variables just get the job done. You can handle null pointers and null pointer exception in many different ways, but the easiest is to run this command that should solve it for 99% of the cases. Now, if that's not possible, I have a few free tips for you that can help you. The first question to ask yourself is, can you avoid having null pointers at all? So when you are programming, for example, a read file function, then you can say, hey, what happens when there's no file or we have problems reading? Well, it should return an error or exception or null pointer or something like that. But instead, you can change the function to always have a default in it. So you say, it has a file name and a default. If it can read from the file name, sure, return that. If not, it will return the default. So this way you can make sure that it's always a string or a byte, whatever it is in your programming language. You can also deal with null pointer exceptions by doing what I call extreme defensive programming. Let's say we have a function called write to file. If you have this in the start of it, you can check if the variables are null and then you just make sure that you handle it from there. The good part about this is that you can make the code very robust. The problem is you can have a little bit of undefined behavior because you have to make sure that you're doing the right thing when you're checking the variables in the start where you would normally check them a little bit later. The easiest way to handle null pointer exceptions is just to have a huge try catch around all your code. This ensures that no null pointer exception will bubble up and cause any problems. Now, this is not so great because you don't know where to restart the code. Also, you don't know where it actually happened. And you have to remember to do proper locking and propagating of uh, errors to make sure that you can actually see what happened in the code. So I don't really like this approach so much. A better way to handle null pointer exceptions is having a decorator called never fail. That never fail, you can put around a function and you make sure that the function never fails. It will catch any kind of errors and report them as it's supposed to. This ensures that you do consistent locking and you make sure the things properly handled. It's also very useful for your team because they can just pop this around the things that they know are a dangerous function. And it also localizes the errors so you know very easily where to continue on the code. If this function doesn't work, doesn't work, but I can continue where I am. The caveat is that if the dangerous function errors, then the never fail will return the error. And so you have to make sure it is handled in the code afterwards. One way I deal with this is that I don't have a never fail decorator, but I have a never fail or that also have a default value if it fails. This ensures that the team knows that they always have to do the right thing and there's no talking about this. But what if you're getting a null pointer exception in production? Well, it can be very hard to ask your clients or users what happened. So instead, you can ask them to do a screen recording using videofeedbacker.com. It makes a screen recording directly in the client's browser and they get a nice little URL they can send to you. It's a tool that my team and I built. So yeah, tell us how much it sucks or how much you like it. I would love to hear more about that. Now tell me, what crazy null pointer exception have you had? The worst I had was my bank throwing a null pointer exception and sending me the whole stack trace where I could see every global variable. And I was like, ah, this is where I keep my money. This doesn't seem that safe. But yeah, tell me about yours and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.